Uh, welcome back to online lecture three on unit number five, heat, trans heat load estimation in building structure. Uh, so this lecture we will uh, uh, focus on the second method of estimating the envelope load, that is equivalent temperature differential method. Mainly we'll discuss uh, uh, CLT or description part of equivalent temperature differential method, or it is also called as a cooling load temperature differential method. So the detailed calculation procedure, uh, uh, the conditions used for calculating uh, the uh, delta T, uh, then what are the corrections to be added, incorporated, and numerical part in order to calculate the uh, uh, average instantaneous and maximum heat gain through a wall structure. Uh, heat transfer through walls and roofs uh, can also be expressed in terms of uh, an equivalent temperature differential delta T uh, defined by the equation Q is equal to U A delta T. Uh, the actual heat transfer to walls and roofs is given by expression that we have discussed in previous method or that is decrement factor and time lag. Uh, so that will be act as a basic equation. So uh, in order to calculate the instantaneous heat transfer actually considering the uh, effect of thermal capacity this equation is used. So the first term indicates uh, the mean uh, rate of heat transfer and second component that is actually the fluctuating component which mainly depends on uh, where uh, the decrement factor that is decrement in heat transfer as well as time lag in heat transfer is taken into account. If we equate uh, these two equations, uh, the delta T can be defined as this. Uh, so delta T is in bracket TM minus TI plus lambda into bracket uh, T E T minus phi minus T M. So where T E T minus phi is the solar temperature that is uh, phi hours before the heat transfer is to be calculated. Now from this, uh, this particular equation, uh, uh, we can say that uh, delta T mainly depends on the decrement factor and time lag, uh, which in turn depends on the thermophysical uh, properties of the constructions because uh, uh, lambda that is decrement factor and time lag it mainly depends on, on the thermal capacity of the <coughs> building structure material uh, so as uh, uh, lambda it uh, mainly absorb the heat uh, depending upon the ability of the material to store the heat the lambda value depends and time lag also it depends on uh, the thermal conductivity density part so how much time it requires to reach the heat inside uh, so consequently uh, delta t also depends on these two factors uh, then outside air temperature what should be the outside temperature and uh, sol solar radiation intensity r because t in order to calculate t t mainly depends on outside air temperature uh, then uh, absorptivity of the material then solar uh, radiation intensity and uh, film coefficient outside film coefficient so obviously delta t also depends on that then room temperature that uh, ti does the equivalent temperature differential approach takes care of the exposure of the wall or roof to the sun uh, so based on this consideration uh, there are uh, values of uh, delta t's are calculated uh, so for different exposures, you can see north, east, south, uh, different uh, heat, uh, different mass fluxes of the construction materials and for the different time that is because uh, based on the time, the solar radiation intensity as well as uh, the outside air temperature varies. So this data is available in most of the data book for 24 hour operations and this data is generally uh, considered for calculation that is delta t. So this data is mainly calculated based on uh, these conditions. Uh, so while calculating this uh, data, the latitude is considered as 40 degree n, uh, but normally suitable for latitude 0 to 50 degree n. Uh, so our Pune's uh, latitude is around 18 degree n. Uh, so for the hottest summer period, so if the latitude is within this particular range, yeah, these delta T values we can take. Uh, uh, this is obtained by considering the outdoor daily range of drivable temperature of uh, 11.1 degrees Celsius. 
uh, so that is the maximum and minimum temperature of uh, outside air uh, is considered as 11.1 .1 degrees Celsius. Then outside and inside design uh, temperature difference is also considered here. That is around 8.3 degrees Celsius. Uh, then a dark color wall, uh, walls and roofs with absorptivity of 0.9 is considered while calculating this. Then a specific heat of construction material is considered as 1.005 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. So these are the five factors uh, uh, considered while estimating the values of delta T in the table. But there are some situations uh, um, this uh, the operating conditions may vary. And when there is a departure from these conditions, the following corrections may be applied. Uh, so if the temperature difference uh, uh, is different from 8.3 degrees Celsius. Uh, so temperature difference is nothing but outdoor temperature and indoor temperature. If it is different from 8.3, the following corrections are added, uh, incorporated. Uh, so if the delta T is greater than 8.3, means uh, the table values under predict, so the addition is required. So if the delta T is greater than 8.3, then add the difference between delta T and 8.3. So means suppose your uh, delta T, for example, if your delta T is 10.3, uh, that means it is greater than 8.3. In that case, you add 2 degrees Celsius in delta T. That is the case. Because uh, uh, it is designed for, uh, values are obtained for 8.3. If delta T is greater than 8.3, then the values in the table under predict uh, the delta t values so uh, this correction need to be incorporated on the other end if delta t is less than 8.3 uh, the subtract difference between delta t and 8.3 this is the first correction made the second correction if the daily range is different from 11.1 .1 degrees celsius uh, then apply effective corrections as follow so the range is nothing but the maximum and minimum temperature now, in this case, for each one degree Celsius difference less than 11.1 .1 degree Celsius, uh, add uh, 0.25 degrees uh, for medium construction and 0.5 degree for heavy construction. That means if the difference is uh, less, that variation is less, means the given values again under predict because uh, the larger the variation, uh, larger means uh, the variation is less means. Uh, the considered variation is greater, so uh, more uniform temperature is there at the outside that indicates. So, so uniform temperature difference uh, transmit more heat than the uh, more range of the temperature. So if the range is less than 11.1, .1, so every 1 degree Celsius difference, uh, 0.5 uh, degree is added for medium construction and 0.5 degree is added for heavy construction. Similarly, for one degree Celsius difference greater than 11.1 uh, degree Celsius, in that case, if the uh, variation, that range is greater than 11.1 .1 degree Celsius, uh, that means uh, if the range is more than uh, this particular value of delta T given in the table will over predict uh, the rate of heat transfer. So in that case, we need to minimize that rate of heat transfer. So in that case, Subtract 0.25 degree for medium construction and 0.5 degree for heavy construction. So a maximum correction is 2 degree for medium and 3 degree for heavy construction. And light construction generally no corrections. But the C factor we are not considering here while solving problem because uh, uh, most of the problems, uh, uh, the 2 degree, uh, it is greater than 2 to 3 degrees Celsius. So to understand the problem only, uh, we are not considering uh, the C correction. So only A and B correction we will consider because if it is less than 11.1 .1 degrees Celsius range, then uh, at a rate of 0 0.5, 0 0.25 degree per degree Celsius rise, uh, uh, decrease, we add for medium construction and for heavy construction, 0 0.5 degree per degree uh, uh, less that we uh, generally add. Uh, and vice versa for uh, the when it if it is greater than 11.1 degrees Celsius. So these two corrections uh, are added uh, as a delta T corrections. So uh, uh, accordingly, the delta T correction uh, which need to be incorporated uh, 
uh, has this particular formula that is plus or minus difference of delta t and 8.3 uh, plus or minus q o max minus q o min minus 11.1 into 0.25 that means the plus sign is used uh, so this first component it is it takes care of uh, difference of value of uh, uh, if if the values uh, value of temperature difference that is indoor temperature and outdoor temperature difference if it is different from 8.3 and the second component uh, generally incorporate if the range is different than 11.1 degree celsius so obviously plus sign is used uh, if the difference is greater in this case and uh, means if delta t is greater than uh, 8.3 and here plus sign is used if uh, range is less than 11.1 so exactly uh, plus sign when it is used and in the uh, other side uh, and on the other hand the negative sign is used when it is uh, delta t is less than 8.3 and range is greater than 11.1 so this uh, particular correction need to be incorporated in the table values to calculate the corrected delta t values now we'll take one numerical on this uh, Uh, in fact the same kind of numerical will take uh, that a uh, 25 cm thick wall is exposed to a periodic temperature and incident uh, radiant variation on an hourly basis between 7 am and 6 pm is given in the table so uh, as uh, similar to the problem of decrement factor and time lag the same problem we have taken here determine the uh, heat gain of the room per unit area of the wall so area is given unit the outdoor maximum and minimum temperatures <coughs> are 40 degrees celsius and 22 degrees celsius respectively so uh, the uh, range is given so uh, uh, outdoor maximum and minimum temperature is around 18 degrees celsius range which is greater than 11.1 degrees celsius and the outside and inside temperature difference is 15 degrees celsius which is again greater than 8.3 degrees celsius so what is the time of maximum heat gain from the wall uh, and in that case uh, the density of the material is given then thermal conductivity k is given that is 1.5 watt per meter kelvin then outside wall uh, coefficient uh, is given that is same that is 23 inside wall coefficient is given that is 7 watt per meter square so these are the values given now we have to calculate uh, again similar to the previous problem that is heat gain of the room per unit uh, area that for every hour it is recommended to calculate so this table is given so the time is given from 1 pm to 6 pm and uh, delta t values are given for different mass fluxes so we can consider this is as a heavy construction this is a, a medium construction so depending upon uh, uh, the va values required so we can assume that if the values required uh, for from first row then we consider that is heavy construction if the values required from second row we consider that is a medium construction in order to incorporate that factor 0.25 or 0.5 now in this case first of all we have to calculate uh, we have to decide which rows which row to be used either first row or second row so for that uh, for the given problem mass of wall uh, that is kg per meter square so in that case uh, density that is mass is given by the density delta x into area so density into delta x that and per unit area if you take on that side it is per meter square so density is given and delta x thickness is also given so its values so mass flux is nothing but mass per unit area so the which is given by rho into delta x so it comes around 319 kg per meter square so we have to use the values of delta t from the second row so this row we have to use so this is table value uh, first of all we have to calculate the correction uh, based on the because range and uh, on temperature difference both are uh, different because delta t is also a different uh, is greater than 8.3 and uh, range is also greater than 11.1 uh, 
so for example here it, delta t is 15 degrees celsius that is 40 and 25 and the range is uh, 40 minus 22 is 18 degrees celsius so range is also greater and delta t is also greater so as per the conditions given correction condition or as per the corrections to be incorporated if delta t is greater than 8.3 the plus sign is to be used and if it is greater than 11.1 .1, the negative sign is used so here the difference need to be considered don't consider the plus minus sign now here it is positive if, if it is uh, so accordingly we can calculate corrections so delta t is 40 minus 25 minus 8.3 so this is the difference so this value should be considered as positive because delta t is greater than uh, so if the delta t is greater than 8.3 we need to add this correction so this is addition and if this is greater than 11.1 .1, we need to subtract this so the square bracket is subtracted from the so the 40 minus 22 minus 11.1 .1. Uh, and we are considering the medium construction so because if we compare these two value comparatively it is a medium construction so 0.25 we uncovered so the value comes around 4.98 uh, degrees celsius uh, so as per the actual practice uh, this value should be considered as only medium construction in 2 degrees celsius but uh, we consider as, as it is that is 4.98 degrees celsius so while solving problem we take as it is so delta t corrected value is a uh, table value that is 3.9 plus delta t correction so with the help of additions uh, we can uh, calculate the values of delta t so these are the values of delta t for uh, different by adding 3.9 plus 4.98 these values we get and in order to calculate the rate of heat transfer uh, again rate of heat transfer is uh, q is equal to u delta t corrected so delta t corrected values we have obtained so u value for for calculating the u value again the information is given uh, that is inner side heat transfer coefficient outer side heat transfer coefficient thickness of the wall and thermal conductivity so based on that u value is calculated so u plus into delta t that is uh, the instantaneous heat transfer for each this is for 1 pm, 2 pm, 3 pm, 4 pm, 5 pm, and 6 pm. So these are the rate of heat transfer for uh, each hour. Uh, uh, if average need to be calculated, the average of all gives you a mean heat, a mean rate of heat transfer. And for maximum rate of heat transfer, so uh, that is 76, and the peak load is arises at 6 pm. So in this case, uh, unlike the previous method, here are the same uh, values uh, in front of time are considered because delta T takes into account uh, that time lag as well as decrement factor as well. So no need to go back like time lag as uh, decrement method. So the peak load occurs at 6 p.m. So what should be the load at 3 p.m. if it is asked, then again, we can easily L that is 44.1 so this table it uh, accordingly this 24 hours table can be developed and uh, we can investigate when the heat load is maximum when the heat load is minimum and what should be the average heat load that is by averaging all these values we can calculate average heat load as well that is a uh, uh, average load on the cooling coil so this is alternative method, but uh, this method is more for uh, user friendly because the delta T values are available for different elevations, uh, different latitude, different exposures. Uh, so I values are also, so uh, it uh, saves the labor of making calculations. So that's why the ETD values are uh, more commonly used uh, by air conditioner engineers. Uh, but nowadays uh, all these, methods so this is a these are the generic methods or these methods uh, based on these methods and softwares are developed and so easily if we put uh, all the conditions operating conditions uh, the rate of heat transfer can be estimated for different modes because uh, uh, this is for particular wall actually so there are different walls different roots are there uh, different wall thickness different materials are there uh, construction materials to be used so uh, if we use adopt uh, this particular method 
uh, then uh, it becomes very lengthy. So nowadays softwares are used, but in order to understand the software calculation, you must understand these two methods. So if you're working on, uh, on definitely in consult uh, uh, while air conditioning uh, designing and while estimating the envelope load, you will definitely come across uh, these two methods that is equivalent factor and time lag and uh, ETD that is equivalent temperature differential methods. So these two methods are very important for unit number five is concerned. So without these two methods, uh, it is very difficult to attempt uh, 16 marks question uh, because generally these numericals are asked for uh, 10 to 12 marks in every examination, either uh, ETD or uh, decrement factor and time lag. So don't give up these uh, methods. Uh, they are comparatively simple. Only once you understand this, uh, th there is uh, nothing difficult in this particular numericals. So with this, we have completed this uh, particular uh, lecture. So at the end of this particular lecture, you should be able to describe uh, this CLTD and ETD method, uh, uh, mainly uh, the detailed calculation procedure of this method. Uh, so how to calculate the conditions? Uh, what are the conditions uh, for calculation of ETD? That means uh, how the delta T values are obtained based on some standard conditions or delta T value available in the table, how they are obtained. Uh, then if uh, there is a departure from these conditions, then what, how the corrections uh, need to be incorporated, uh, especially two types of correction. If the range is different and temperature difference is different, then the correction needs to be incorporated. And finally, uh, the determination of instantaneous heat transfer that is at any particular time. So in this case, uh, it directly gives the delta T value gives the rate of heat transfer at that particular time unlike the previous method. Um, we can also average, uh, we can calculate the average rate of heat transfer by averaging all the readings of 24 hours. And uh, uh, we can also investigate uh, what is the, when uh, the heat transfer, heat gain is maximum in the wall structure. Uh, that's it for this lecture. Uh, now, uh, the next lecture we will mainly discuss the uh, ECBC, that is Energy Conservation Building Code, uh, because while designing the uh, air conditioning system for any building, or especially the concept of green building, uh, some uh, mandatory requirements are there. So next lecture, we'll see uh, what is the purpose of this ECBC, then scope of ECBC, and some mandatory requirement for various systems used in the building structure. Uh, thank you very much.